Welcome, dear listeners, to broadcasts from elsewhere. A podcast where we discuss things that you may not hear about elsewhere. I'm your host, Enigma, and as you might remember from the last podcast, we are in the middle of our No Way November stretch of the month, where we're doing bad movies and so bad they're good movies. We'll still be covering oddities and other strange media after this month. But this is specifically about bad and so bad they're good. Which I do love. I have a soft spot for them. Let me know. Today's movie, I'm very excited about this one, is Blood Sucking Bastards. And let me tell you folks, honestly, I don't think this deserves a title bad. I thought it was really, really good, honestly. Blood Sucking Bastards is about a telemarketing company that slowly gets taken over by vampires. And I know that sounds cheesy as fuck. And, you know, I'm sure it could be seen as very cheesy in some respects. But I'm okay with that, honestly. It's got Pedro Pascal in a starring role as well. We'll hear about that soon when we get into the plot details. There's also a quick little cameo from Matthew Lillard that I was not expecting either. But it's actually, it's a very, it's a nice, it's a horror comedy movie. And I highly suggest you check it out. Now, of course, we are going to get into spoilers here soon when it comes to the actual discussion of this show, of this movie. But this is your chance right now to stop, go watch it if you want to. If not, spoilers ahead. You've been warned. There'll be no further warnings. You're in for it now. <laughs> so, Blood Sucking Bastards. We start with honestly an amazing intro song. It's called The Rising by Five Knives, and honestly, go listen to it after this podcast, or pause this and come back. If you like dubstep or like electronic beats style music, you'll probably love it. So that's, you get that over the opening credits with a bunch of like people smushed against like mirrors and stuff, flying supplies, <laughs> it's funny. After the credits, we get, we see one of our main leads here, Tim. He's, he's multitasking, you could say. He's playing some kind of you know, like shoot 'em up game while he's also trying to be a telemarketer at the same time like he's on the phone on the headset with somebody freaking at his desk playing some kind of like halo rip off or some shit <laughs> and of course he ends up he ends up losing the sale if i'm right but they sell medication here at this company i heard about it i'm not sure they were saying the company could be wrong it's not my notes though so regardless after he loses his game because he gets killed in his game his sales manager, or acting sales manager is what he is really, Evan, he comes up and he tells him like, hey, you need to work on this presentation. Because it turns out Evan is looking forward to getting promoted soon, from being acting sales manager to full-time sales manager. Which, understandable, you know, work on these soulless corporations forever. Definitely want to move up so you can get some more money. If you're going to sell your soul, you may as well make more money, right? The medication they're selling is, or the, that he's supposed to put the, um, presentation for something called phallocyte which is apparently male enhancement and um it's pretty funny because apparently it makes special parts screen so that's nice <laughs> along with the other effects it's supposed to have <laughs> then we got to we get to see and um, some other workers we have andrew and mike they're just goofing around you get the vibe that pretty much no one in this office is very productive which is kind of you know to be expected i suppose um, we see them though, and they're just kind of hucking little pig balls at this chick, trying to get like a wad stuck in her hair, basically. It's so dumb. <laughs> I like it. Uh, we get a new intern who comes in. Uh, his name is Jack, but we're not going to get to know him for very long, so, you know. He's looking for Evan, of course. They don't know where he is, and they're being dick packs to him because he's an intern, which I guess is probably part for the course, honestly. They send him to go take up the garbage. And so he goes down to the garage where the dumpster is. Before he can even get to the dumpster, he sees, runs into, <laughs> he literally runs into Frank, which is the security guard down there. He's got a very militaristic attitude to him. He's freaking hilarious. <laughs> and he runs into him, and he also runs into Jerry, which is the janitor, who honestly is the one supposed to be taking out the garbage, but you know, whatever. Oh yeah, <laughs> Jack can scream bloody murder, honestly. It's funny because when he runs into Frank, he immediately screams like like a little girl, basically, and it's so funny. 
and then after he almost immediately after he puts the trash in the dumpster, he's murdered, and we get a funny little shot of like him screaming, and you can't really see what's happening to him. But we like zoom out, and you can see like Jerry, the janitor guy, in his car is jamming out to his tune, like doing little drum movements and shit. <laughs> It's great. Uh, then we cut back to the break room inside the office, and Evan's confronting Tim again. And of course, Tim and nobody else who's supposed to work on this presentation. No one's gotten any work done. Big surprise, honestly. Right. <laughs> so, no work's been done. Amanda, the head of HR, she comes into the break room now as well. And she and Evan have had a fling before. They had sort of a. They were dating, it seems, but they were like in the very beginning of their relationship. But they, they flash back to when two of them are on the couch, and she says, you know, hey, I love you, just I know it when they're hanging out one night. And he just says, no, like that, like I just did. And it's, <laughs> it's like, why would you even, and it's funny because all the workers and stuff ragging about this too, but it's like, why, you could have said anything else. <laughs> you could have said anything else, and it would have been better. <laughs> You could have just said, like, me too, or something, and it would have been better. It wouldn't have been a lot better, but it would have been better than saying no. <laughs> After that, we cut to Andrew, he's hidden on a girl. No, I think it's Andrew or Mike. Oh, sorry, it's Mike. My bad. Mike. You see Mike trying to hit on this girl. Her name is Zabeth. She's like this other girl who also has a crush on Evan. We'll see more about that later. But he's trying to hit on her and stuff, and obviously he strikes out, so no big deal there. I guess we also meet Ted now. Now I meet Ted. He is the regional manager, I suppose. He's the manager of the actual office that they're in. He's, he's talking to Evan, making sure like you have to have this presentation ready, because we need this client so that it's going to be like a lot of business for us. Because, see, they sell several medications out. Like earlier, at the beginning of the movie, Tim is trying to sell a... He's trying to sell... A drug that like, helps people get off cigarettes. Like a nicorette gum kind of situation, you know? But in pill form, I guess. Anywho, the point is they need this client, this phallocyte client, very badly, apparently. Evan, when he's giving this talk, you know, it's under the impression, like, oh, I'm gonna get this promotion, I'm gonna become a sales manager now, right? Let's see. So he tells him, like, hey, I also have an announcement, and just go ahead and get everyone in the office, into my office, you know, so we can have this announcement and talk about this. So Ted starts to talk about like, oh, we've got, we've had this, we've had him as acting sales manager for a long time, and blah blah. blah we need, but it's time we get an actual sales manager. He says, but <laughs> just when we think he's gonna say like, hey, you know, Evans promoted, no, this is where Pedro Pascal comes in, new man, Max Phillips, is his name, walks in, played by Pedro Pascal, as I mentioned. We learn that him and Evan used to go to college together, but Evan got him kicked out. Because Max had tried to steal, or did steal, Evan's girl back in college. He brings us up a lot, also. Um, but anyways, Evan was able to get him kicked out of school for supposedly cheating on a test. And of course, I'm sure Max is not happy about that. That's a nice twist of irony that now he's going to be his manager. Which, you know, it's kind of part of the course when it comes to movies. It's like, oh my god, the person I mistreated is now my manager. Which is... Honestly, always some fun come up. And Max gives a nice speech about how they have to sell people on dreams, not just the medicine, but on the dreams they can give them. And he tells them that they have a sales goal of one million dollars for the next month, or for the coming month. He also jokingly says, "Like you know, hey, me and Ted have talked about this, and if you don't that goal, I'll kill you." He says it like very matter-of-factly, so it's kind of like, is he kidding though? It's probably not, as we find out. <laughs> After the meeting, we see Max speaking to Amanda, who you remember is the HR person, and Evan, you said thing. He convinces her to let him get to know her better. Max convincing her, I mean that, because it seems like he's using... It almost seems like he's almost hypnotizing her in a way, because like, she's very robotic in her answer, it seemed like to me at least. But, uh, there are reasons for that. We'll see that later. <clears throat> you, probably know. you can probably guess, honestly. <clears throat> right as she says yes, Evan, of course, walks into the HR office. Awkward. <laughs> 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 After that, we cut to 
later on that night, we have Mike from earlier. He's in the office after hours. He's the only one there. <coughs> and he's there playing, once again, that same shirt game they're playing earlier in the beginning of the movie. He's shit talking to somebody in the headset. He's playing against some child, it sounds like, honestly. Honestly, he's shit talking that much to a child, but you know. Whatever. <laughs> But you should save your shit talking for people who are your age, honestly. But for real, come on. Anyways, he gets kind of jump scared almost by Jerry because <laughs> kind of comes up behind him. He's like, hey, you know this? You're not supposed to be here. And he says, like, yeah, well, you know what? And it's great here, so I'm going to be here for a while. And Jerry's just like kind of done with him. He's done with his shit, so he's like, I'm just going to take a smoke break. So he disappears. You start to hear spooky noises inside the office. <laughs> Mike gets up and he's, he goes to the bathroom. I guess he was scared shitless. But I'm just, anyways. <laughs> goes to the bathroom, he's on the pot, you know, on the toilet, and then Bryce, as he's sitting down, um, the lights go out. It's pitch black in there. He, of course, calls out and like, hey, you know, this isn't funny. So he thinks it's a prank, but it's not a prank. It's not a prank, bro. He gets attacked, and we don't need to see the assailant. He's dragged out from the stall, screaming. And we hear some crunching noises. Remember, the next morning Evans coming into work. And he sees Mike's car in the garage, right? And of course, he's still, he thinks this is a little odd because it's a little early for Mike to be here, you know. Because he comes in and no one's seen Mike at all today. The security guard hasn't seen him. No one you know, knows that he's here at the office yet. Because they mentioned that later as well. But I know who he gets here. And this, after a brief, uh, <clears throat> after he briefly talks to the um, Security guard about Mike. He goes to the bathroom. Guess who's waiting for him in the bath? Mike. Or rather, Mike's body. Body's there. It's covered in blood. All over the shirts. Yep. Blood all over the walls behind him. It's a, it's a mess. So he runs out of the bathroom in a panic. He runs to Ted's office. He tells him that, hey, I, he tells him and Max are both there. I'm in Ted's office. He tells him, hey, I just found Mike. He's all frazzled, of course. So they're like, what the hell are So. They get security, so they get Frank, they get Jerry, and, and Mike, and sorry, Max, Ted, and Evan as well. And we'll go back to the stall. It's clean as a whistle. Body, no blood. Now Ted thinks that he's just faking it, that he didn't actually see anything, right? Because uh, he thinks, like, oh, you're just stressed about the phallocyte presentation, so you know, don't worry about it. If you need more time, well, you know, you try to do that, but it's no need to make all those crazy accusations and shit. So. No one believes him, but after one believes, Frank and Evan are still in the bathroom. Because Evan's just dumbfounded, and Frank is like investigating something. And he finds a little, little bit of blood still in the floor that somebody missed. They were cleaned it up, you know. And he tells him, he's like, hey, I believe you. He shows him the blood now. So, Evan then goes to Amanda's office. He tries to tell her what happened. Of course, she doesn't believe him because she's like, it's Mike. He's the biggest goofball in the company. He probably is just pulling a prank on you. So he goes back out to the floor. Evan does. Then Mike simulates a character I forgot to introduce earlier. It was Dave. He's not, he's not very important until this point in the story. So here's where you actually want to know about. We have Dave. Earlier in the movie, the movie was bothering people about the NCAA pool that they had. They have a, a betting pool every time there's sporting events I assume, but they do say that they do these polls a lot. So he's been trying to collect the money on the, from the losers in the poll. Forgot this. Max invites him into his office for a brief moment. And when he comes back out of the office, he's way more sick. And he's also not wearing the glasses he was wearing earlier. Which is not right. He demands the money that Tim owes him and it has to be paid by five o'clock today on these. And Evan's trying to get into the computer for to Mike's computer because he had the files for the presentation. Of course, Mike's not there, and it's a password-protected computer. So he rings up Zabeth from out there and asks her to please go downstairs and get the files so we can make a new spreadsheet and everything. So she does. While she's down there, she's trying to get the boxes. Once again, somebody gets her. And you don't get to see what happens to her this time. You don't get to see any, but just like everything earlier this time, cut away from that. After she gets tapped, Tim and Amanda are in the break room and cut away. Cut away to them in the break room. 
and talking about the breakup that happened with Evan. Tim's trying to tell her, can I give him another chance? Because you know, Tim's good friends with Evan. They're close pals and stuff. And unfortunately, Evan has to walk in near the end when she's talking about, you know, how, how awful it was that he just said no instead of just saying anything else. Which is reiterated several times in this movie, honestly. After Amanda is leaving the break room, she runs into Beth. So she's alive, as you can see now. But she's acting different. Her hair's down, so it wasn't a ponytail and very straight, and now it's curly, hanging down. She starts kind of hitting on Amanda, like, telling her, like, you know what, you're not good enough for Evan, but you are good enough for me, or something like that. I forget the exact line, but she starts coming on heavy to her. <laughs> and after that, we see Tim and Evan, I don't know, that are going to planning the presentation, it looks like. They've got, like, cork board going for some playing. Uh, Dave comes in and you see a knife fly right by Tim's face. He's from the court board. You see it fly right by his face and just it's almost could have if it was like just a could have been if it was just like a few inches, you know, to the left or something. And Dave tells him again that better have my money, basically. And after Dave leaves and Heaven's like, yeah you know, I'll, I'll just loan it to you. <laughs> Like, you know, deal with that, you know. Um, later on, the same day, Andrew and Evan, they're staying out for hours, they're trying to work on the presentation. They're trying to crunch that numbers to get that, that presentation done by tomorrow is when it's supposed to be done. So they're really breaking their own balls, you know. <coughs> but Evan finds that there's a file missing that they need. He needed the file for another month's things. So he sends Evan down or sends Andrew down to get the file in the basement. And who else is in the basement but Sabeth again? And meanwhile, Evan, while Andrew's away, decides he's going to go try to get into Max's computer because he's very suspicious of him, which, understandably so, because, yeah. You know, but he also just doesn't like Max, and that's also understandable what they've had in the past, you know. He's also not very happy about him taking the position from him. Makes sense. Anyways. Max is trying to break his computer, he's unsuccessful, but he does find some files on all the employees that work there currently. Everyone's got like a circle or an X on their picture, and he's the only one he finds that his file is the only one that does not have a circle or an X. So meaning they haven't decided they're going to fire him yet, basically. Because anyone with X is getting axed from the company. So here we also see that Ted, manager of this company, or the manager of this branch, at least, everything else, it has an X as well, so that means he is going to be fired at some point. Max is looking to get rid of him, basically. Keep that in your mind. And while he's doing that, Zabeth is downstairs with Andrew. She's trying to seduce him, but she's being very, very rough. And she starts, like, she pins him on the floor. She tries to, like, kind of kiss him and make out with him a bit, but she bites his lip. Apparently that was too much for him, because he was like, no, this is way too rough. Like, I'm getting out of here. Plus, he knows that she has feelings for Evan, he doesn't want to fuck off that, because Evan's his friend and whatnot. So he tries to fight her off, and he gets pinned against the wall during this fight. She sinks her teeth right into his neck. As you may have guessed, this was probably painfully obvious. obvious. This was probably painfully obvious. She is, of course, a vampire, so... Bites him right in the neck, and we cut back to Evan. He's in Max's office. He comes out. He sees Andrew's and order. Seems like, where the hell did he go? Did he abandon me? Because he feels like you know it's been long. It's, it's been long enough. He should have gotten the file by now, right? And he's, he goes towards the stairs, the basement, and he sees Evan just like crawling out the door to the stairwell. And he just goes run. And Evan tries to go find help, but he had he hears. So when people chasing him, he doesn't see them yet. We do find out later who it is, but that's there. But so he starts to sneak around, trying to find some help or something. He finds a hiding place in the janitor's closet. So he goes into there and he, he starts to make a call. And you know, you would think that he would call 911, right? But no. He calls Amanda. Which I don't know what he was thinking, but he calls Amanda. But when no one is answered, it's not Amanda on either line, it's Max. Max is at Amanda's home right now. Amanda's in the kitchen, 
She left her phone and literally Max Max answers it. And he has a little like macho thing about like, oh I'm gonna steal your girl and all this stuff. And it's really <laughs> nothing too crazy. But he does basically do like a little pay for it about like, you know, you should really call the police in this kind of situation. It's not a situation for Amanda. And he keeps making petty comments about how he's gonna steal his girl and all that stuff. You know, petty shit. Anyways, after they hang up, some people are trying to break down the supply closet. And after a little bit, we kind of black out. And we fade back in, we see that Evan has somehow fallen asleep. We see that Evan has somehow fallen asleep. I don't know how that happened. That one's the only kind of plot hole on the little confused by right there, because it's like, breaking down the door, breaking down the door, and then suddenly, boom, he's asleep. And it's like, how'd that happen? Nonetheless, Ted, Max, and Tim all walk in, and they, they, because they discovered him sleeping in that closet, and through, <clears throat> and Evan tries to sound like, oh my god, Andrew's dead, and it's this, and that happened, and, and Andrew walks in, he's got his hair slicked back, he's pretty pale, you know, and he's like, yeah, I'm dead, I'm dead tired from having played this whole night, and he, went, and he finished presentation after, I guess, recovering from his vampire bite. <laughs> Sad as desk and fucking did all his work. So Ted tells Andrew, like, you're going to get to run the presentation. And almost goes to fire at Max steps in and tells him, like, hey, everyone has their mistakes, right? Just let him slap. So Max saves his job, basically. Which is, you know, not something you're expecting, right? But, yeah. So... Evan gets to keep his job and he goes to his he goes to see Tim in the office space area. And Tim tells him, like, hey, here's your new desk, it's right next to me. And it's the what used to be the printer desk. But will still be the printer desk apparently. But that's gonna be uh, Evan's new work desk. Of course he's upset about that. But Tim tells him, like, hey, at least it didn't turn you into a vampire. And that's where we learn that Tim knows too. Tim is not a vampire though. He mentioned that, of course. Tim is still in the but he is aware that everyone's vampire, or people are getting turned into vampires, not everyone's vampire yet. But, of course, Evan's like, how the hell do you know? So he tells him, he has a little flashback sequence where he's on his <laughs> various grid times, and he keeps seeing things that are odd to him. Like, the first thing that was weird to him was a random shoe flying across his car, and it's like, a shoe. It's like, well, yeah, that's not it, though. And I see another flashback of Andrew and Beth making out. It's like, yeah, that's a little weirder. And he finally says that he saw um, Max turn Elaine into a vampire. Elaine is another character. She was the one that was uh, getting little wides chucked here in her hair by Andrew and Mike earlier in the movie. So she's like basically the shy office girl. She doesn't really talk to people a lot and stuff. Um, but she is also the one who apparently supplies the supply closet. Anywho, he sees her get turned, and that's like the, the key evidence right there for that. We know that Max is a vampire, possibly the head vampire as well, since all this started when he showed up. So, you see that we have both of them, Tim and Evan, they go into Amanda's office, and they tell her what's going on, but like, Max is turned complete vampires, and she, of course, doesn't believe him. She thinks that's a ridiculous thing to believe. When they walk back out, they see that all their other co-workers have been turned. Aside from themselves and Amanda, everyone is a vampire. Well, not everyone, I suppose. We'll see what else they're here soon, that there is one other person. At least one other person that's also not a vampire. We'll go into that. But they can see that everyone's a lot more efficient, for example, and them saying that Andrew got, I think, 14 sales in one day. And for him, that's very impressive, because he usually sits on his ass all day. So, as you can see, the vampires are a lot more efficient, explaining why this has happened. Well, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, because I don't know that I've ever heard that vampires are, like, very good workers. <laughs> but, you know, you do you know they right? Anyways, they run down to the security desk, and they see Frank. He's still there, he's still human. They grab him, and they tell him, like, and everyone's been turned into vampires, and he's like, yeah. And, yeah, I know. And, like, what do you mean you're not? And then they have a little flashback sequence and it shows that 
that Frank was there with Tim every single time that he saw one of these pieces of evidence that he already knew too. So, Frank tells me, okay, let's go to the garage. I've got weapons in my van that we can use. And unfortunately, we get to the garage and his, all his weapons are gone. All been taken. And that's where we see Jerry, the janitor, again. He confronts them and it's revealed that he's been a vampire this whole time. Since day one of Max showing up, basically. So, he's very offended that they don't even know his name and that they don't even know that he was turned. So it's kind of funny that he's, he's just like really butthurt about that, honestly. But, so he, had, he was the one who confiscated the weapons and he's the one who's been removing things like Mike's body, for example. He cleaned that up. Frank tries to confront him, but he gets thrown. But while they're having their little argument about, like, you didn't notice that I was turned in the last uh, while well, he's having that argument, Frank is able to sneak back up on him and stake him in the heart so, with a some kind of makeshift object. Actually, I think he just had a spare, sh <laughs> spare stake on him for some reason. <laughs> he was probably prepared because he did say he knew already and he'd been researching on vampires. So, I guess they stab him. It's here that we learn that vampires don't just die when you stake them, they explode into a bloody mess. <laughs> it's honestly hilarious. They just go just a pop, like a pimple almost. It's fun. So they go back upstairs and they go into the supply office and they start making a lot of makeshift weapons. They take some, some broom handles and whatnot and break them up and sharpen them, you know, so they stakes. Uh, Tim, for some reason, sharpens a bunch of pencils. So that's, you know, strongest object on a man, a pencil. <laughs> and Evan is what I thought was cool. So he takes this one of those paper cutter machine, like a paper cutter panel things, where it's got the little blade that you bring down and slice. He breaks off the blade of it. Has that like a sword basically to use. So now they're fully strapped with all these stakes and other objects. Yeah, Frank or someone's grabbed the fire extinguisher <laughs> as well. Okay, it works, you know. So they go back up to the office area and they're like, they gotta, they tell my man to sneak because they can't, you know, but they want to see them. And they're trying to get to Max's office, right? But yeah, before they get back upstairs, seems to Before they get back upstairs, they do get to see a very brief, we get a very brief cameo of Matthew Lovett. Right before they go get their weapons, so I just forgot to mention that. I'm sorry. It's a very brief moment, so it's kind of. Was meant to sound, I know it's not almost forgot much. But we see Matthew Lillard from a brief moment. He's apparently the phallocyte club representative who was supposed to meet with them today. <laughs> he just sees all these people covered in blood and he's like, Reading's cancelled. And he's just like, Okay. And he just turns to the reps and he's like, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> gotta go. So they all leave. Then we get the weapon. See, my bad. A little bit mixed up here. <laughs> Anyways, they get back up to the office floor, but they are spotted. They weren't as sneaky as they thought. They were able to run into Max's office real quick. Or whether it's Ted's office, but Max is using that, you know. Either way, they run into there. And in there is got Ted, Max, Amanda, and Andrew waiting for the file site cook. Of course, they're not going to be there. So they tell Ted that, you know, Max is a vampire. He's going to be taking over the company and stuff. And they also mentioned that they killed Jerry because he was a vampire. Ted is not surprised in the slightest about the vampire thing, but he is worried about it. He is upset that they killed Jerry. But he, it's then revealed that he knew the whole time that it was actually part of the plan. So apparently this company, or this branch, was going under. So that's why they brought Max in in the first place. He's come in and make people vampires, make them more efficient workers. For some reason it works. But then... Max reveals that when Evan had gotten kicked out of college back in the day, that the only other college he took him was someplace in Romania. And that's where he learned his new management techniques, <laughs> say. So he got turned, basically, after he left that college. So he got turned into a vampire when he went to Romania. It's there that they taught him, them, taught him about how you can turn other people into vampires and they'll be more efficient workers, apparently. So. That was their plan the whole time, was to convert everyone to a vampire and make the whole office more efficient. Then Evan tells Ted 
that Max was planning to get him up out of the picture as well, to fire Ted. And Ted is, of course, like, taken back. He's like, you're going you're gonna to force me out of the company? And Max is upset for a second, and just very calmly takes Ted's head, and he just snaps it. Broken neck. Dead. Nearly. And Amanda finally understands the gravity of the situation. She finally realizes that it's real, that there is actually a vampire conspiracy BS happening. <laughs> and she decides she's going to go with Evan. Max is very calm about this. He's like, yeah, you know, go, leave, get out of here, you know? <laughs> so they do walk out of the office, but they're basically surrounded by all the, all the vampires, I should say. But yeah, it's not looking good for Amanda trying to like, see, like, find a plan of what to do. Tim, stupidly, um, agitates Dave, and Dave starts to attack him, and the other vampires fall suit the rest of the team. Tim tries to, <laughs> Tim tries to stake him in the heart with one of those pencils that he sharpened. It breaks like immediately on impact. I really don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> Evan and Amanda do get to score their first kills. She stakes somebody, he slices somebody's head off with his uh, blade that he made, the paper cutter machine. That's when she learns that they explode as well. Uh, Frank <coughs> is taken elsewhere with Elaine. He's fighting with her head one on one. Uh, he's like really enjoying it. <laughs> it's weird because he's like, they're like, fighting, trading blows and whatnot, and he's like, yeah, hit me, hit me. He's like really getting into it. It's kind of funny. <laughs> but um, he ends up getting her with a stake that he throws into her chest. Great. Blows up, of course. Boom. Uh, Tim is still, still fighting Dave. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's taking two pencils in his gun but in a cross formation. He's trying to get like, back. <laughs> it seems to be kind of working because he's not like attacking him, but he does like start monologuing. Dave is that his face starts monologuing about like, oh, I was the biggest loser and now I'm an all powerful immortal being and then he gets smushed by a fucking violent government. <laughs> Pretty much right after he says he's immortal, it's fucking great. <laughs> a filing cabinet just comes out of nowhere and splatters him against the wall. Blood everywhere. And we see that Andrew, vampire Andrew, has, is the one who killed him. And Tim's like, oh my god. You're a good vampire. He's like, no, I'm not a good vampire. I just hate that bitch. <laughs> so Andrew is here doing this one. Um, meanwhile, we see that Evan and Amanda have taken out the rest of the crew. So it's just Max now. But then he reveals that he's like, you know, I wouldn't I think I wouldn't have done this whole takeover without consulting legal. He says. And then we get to see a bunch of vampire lawyers <laughs> come up the come up the basement stairs. <laughs> He tells <laughs> when he beckons Amanda in with his like you know, supernatural powers and all that. So she's in the office with him again. That's the lawyers versus Frank and Evan, because Frank came back to join them like not long after that. <laughs> Frank tells him, like, hey, listen, you go get your girl. I'll take these guys on. So Frank like Frank basically gives up his life at this point. He goes and fights all those lawyers. It's like six of them. All at once. Evan goes into the office. So, it, so Evan and Frank are in the office. I'm sorry, Evan and Max, sorry, are in the office together. And we get a little cut in between here, go back and forth a bit. But the main thing is Max is having his little villain speech monologue. And meanwhile, we have Andrew and Tim, who are both, they're just kind of casually talking, it's funny. So, uh, Andrew is trying to convince Tim to let him turn him, because he doesn't want to just kill him because he likes him as a friend of his, you know. <laughs> so they keep talking about like, you know, like, oh, well, you know, I could turn you. And Tim's like, well, I could also kill you. And he's like, because I don't want to be a vampire. So they start, they keep trying to convince one another of their plans and whatnot. Um, Max is so we cut. I like said we keep cutting them, control. but while Max is monologuing at one point, Amanda tries to go and stake him like. He's talking, but he's got some reflexes, so he throws her across the room before she can get him. And then he continues to monologue. He tells Evan that he planned to keep him alive as a vampire. Sorry, not as a vampire, but as a human. He'd be the only human that works for them. He tells him he wants him to suffer 
him to basically work at this corporation until he's dead. And then he'll get to see you know, Max and Amanda be immortal in Laura and Thomas. But at the hill, he's still at his dead end job and he'll die in his dead end job. And while he's having that part of speech, <laughs> Amanda's finally going to get a good hit on him. And it doesn't kill him right away, though. But they do get a good hit on him to actually distract him enough to where they can start wailing on him. So they do break a vase over his head. Uh, at one point, Evan gets his paper cutter sword thing stuck in his fort in Max's forehead. So that's awesome. Uh, we do have a brief cut back to Andrew and Tim, and they've decided they're going to play rock, paper, scissors to decide if Tim gets turned or not, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so we get that for a second. <laughs> then we get back to Max and Evan, and they finally get a stake through his heart and push it way in deep. And he's Dreams like a banshee, and then gets huge explosions that like paints all four walls of the office. It's amazing. I guess because he's like one of the head vampires, he's probably a little bit more messy, I guess. I don't know how it works, but it's awesome. <clears throat> but after that, Tim comes into the office and he sees all the blood. He's like, holy shit, like, what the hell happened? I'm like, yeah, it's some of his blood, some of our blood, you know. It's all good. So they all three leave, basically walk into the sunset, more or less. Discuss dinner plans, which, well, how would you be hungry <laughs> after all that, honestly? But uh, we get a brief little tease here. We see a cleaner lady with Brady going upstairs to you know, do like the nightly cleaning job. And when she walks in, she sees all the destroyed cubicles and the bloody mess everywhere. She's like, son of a bitch or something. Andrew, who's still alive, comes up behind her, bites her in the neck, and is like, in my office in 10 minutes. Well, credits. <laughs> it was, honestly, this movie was so much fun. It is it's very much a comedy, not very much a horror, but it does have like the horror elements. So it's like, you know, that horror adjacent vibe, which I do like. So, yeah, it was great, honestly. If you can, check it out. It's for free on Tubi. Highly recommend if you just listened to all this. Obviously, you got spoiled, but hey, if you're still interested and you're still I don't care about the spoilers, go check it out. I promise you it's worth it. This movie was definitely an upgrade from yesterday when I had to watch the freaking Hot Saves Easter movie. Oh lord. Never again. Never again with that. I think that about covers it now. So thank you so much for if you've listened this long, really appreciate you continuing to listen to all my ramblings. If you're there, still, you're awesome. Thank you so much for listening. Share it with Share the podcast with a friend, you know, if you know someone else who likes weird, obscure movies and TV shows, put them our way, you know, tell them to make work for us. In the middle of also sending my Twitter page as well for you guys to follow. I have an email that you can send movie suggestions and TV suggestions to. The email address is broadcasts from elsewhere at gmail.com. I happily take any requests and add to my own list of topics. But until next time, I hope you tune in again. Thank you so much for listening. Cinema, something.